So, you want to start modeling in 3D, but you're not sure where to start? Here are 5 tips for new builders starting in 2021. Tip number one, generalize and specialize. To begin your journey, first work on building a well-rounded foundational skill base. Once you've got your basic tool belt, use that as a launch pad to hone your skills and dig into what you're really passionate about. I got you. You'll see a lot of other people around creating so many different types of art, models, maps, illustrations, characters, and more. Let these things inspire you. Collect photos, films, videos, and games that make your blood boil with soul-filling anticipation. On top of that, you might find yourself trying to do what's popular, not because you like the subject matter, but because you want to ride the wave of popularity. And I get it. Attention is a highly sought after commodity, but if you start to focus on that, you'll be leaving your authenticity in the dust. Instead of letting those petty motivations control you, focus instead on discovery and exploration of a lot of different things, then cling on to whatever you genuinely like. It's okay to move on from time to time and for your interests to change. You're more likely to inspire others if you do what you are really passionate about and not what you're forcing yourself to do or what you think you ought to do. Instead of hopping on whatever bandwagon is popping at the moment. Play the long game by building a foundation of skills so you know your way around the craft. And then use your knowledge of the fundamentals to focus on what really inspires you. Your timing is perfect as long as you get started and make some kind of progress. So let go of that feeling that you're getting left behind by everybody else who's way ahead of you because your progress has nothing to do with anybody else, it just has to do with you. Along your journey, you'll need some inspiration of your own to keep you going. You may look at your end goal and what type of art and models you really wish to master. Then, find artists and designers who specialize in the most similar thing that you can find. I got you. And then extrapolate, meaning draw from it, the basic topics and skills that you'll need to develop to soar through the learning curve of your chosen destination. A few ideas of topics you can get started with are the principles of design, basic anatomy, basic physics, my favorite, geometry, and lighting in life and rendering. There's a bunch of others, but here's just what came off the top of my head. Dive right in and just start learning. There's no right way to go about it except to just do it. Tip number two, consistency. It's one thing to start out learning a new skill or working on a new project. It's another entirely to actually finish it. I sometimes look at game stats for fun and I noticed that on Steam games with a completion badge, around 30% of players actually finished the game. And that's being generous. On some games, it was as low as 15%. Now, if you want to be one of those people who finishes what you start, a good habit to make is to only make promises that you can keep and start with small steps. Now, do start making promises to yourself and keeping them, even if they're things that you already do anyway. Another aspect of consistency is the progress you make over time by working at your craft on a regular basis. You may already know this, but skills atrophy over time, or atrophy, if that's the way you pronounce it, just like muscle. But that also means that frequency and repetition does the reverse. Not only will practicing every day help you keep gained skill and not lose it, but it will also keep what you learned fresh in your mind to accelerate your progress. If you get overwhelmed about the promise to do it every day, don't worry. Start by doing it on 
Mondays or Fridays. But you have to keep that promise. And when you're ready, don't hesitate to upgrade that promise. One way to avoid overwhelming yourself is to give yourself consistent breaks. When I used to compete in piano, I would have to practice every day to avoid losing progress on my current pieces. But even with the built up skill of focusing for multiple hours at a time, I didn't have to push myself too hard to maintain consistent progress. I just had to make the decision repeatedly, as in daily, to sit down and just work at it. So the principle of consistency states that what you do repeatedly dictates your progress much more than what you do in a given practice session. It doesn't take much effort to work a little every day, and it has much more of a compound effect than you realize after a few days or a few weeks. So keep a good track record, and you will eventually look back at what you've done proudly. Tip number three. Do hard things. Stealing the title of this from a book I read when I was a teenager, which I really liked, one story they told is about shale and monks who brutalized themselves and went through grueling things just for the heck of it, so they could be tough. Now, maybe there's a purpose in that somewhere, but that's not the kind of hard thing I'm telling you to do. Do hard things that are worth it to you, that lead you to a destination that you want to arrive at. But you do have to push yourself a bit if you want to progress quickly, and to be competitive if that's what you're aiming for. And if you plan to make money as a 3D designer, you definitely should be prepared for a little competition, and be willing to work hard. And bringing out your authenticity is really going to help you there, because you stand out. But the more you do hard things, the easier those things actually get. Back when I was a competitive pianist, I would always have musical pieces beyond my skill level at the time that I was dying to play. But every time I opened up the score, I would look at all the complicated notes and just kind of <laughs> give up instantly. So what I started doing is, I would pull out sheet music that was even harder, that was like crazy level. And I would take that for a spin. And I would choose a specific amount of time whether it be an hour or 10 minutes, and I would just dedicate myself to actually trying to learn that freaking crazy god-level piece. Once I'd thoroughly beaten my brain into pieces against that complicated stuff, I went back to what was just above my skill level, and it didn't seem like such a stretch anymore. You'll never go wrong with trying out hard things. Tip number four, organization. I can't tell you how many times I've misplaced files, objects in the 3D window, and even entire project folders. And it gets even worse when somebody's hiring you. It's super frustrating and it wastes tons of time. There came a day when I finally said, I'm done, and I started to organize all the files on my computer little by little. It took time, but every time I noticed an out of place file or folder, instead of procrastinating the day of its proper placement, I would take care of it then and there. I had to make new folders and design entire new folder hierarchies so that I would easily be able to find the place that things go. But now I have things so organized that I can literally type in a file destination in the Windows File Explorer and I'll find exactly what I need really quickly. It's kind of up to you how you want to organize stuff, but eventually, here we go with another promise, Eventually, I'll talk about not only file organization, but also organization and naming conventions within your 3D project so you can see how I do it and have a place to start for yours. If something like that exists in the future, you'll see a card in the top right. But until then, do remember to keep your files and objects in your 3D project organized and name things and put things into folders and just generally make it easier for yourself in the future by taking a moment to create some organization. It's a good habit to start from the beginning. Tip number five, simplify. Simplify what? Simplify your life? Simplify your intelligence? No. Simplify your builds! I do not mean don't add detail. I freaking love adding tons of gratuitous amounts of detail. But what I mean is that if you start with the detail, you're never gonna finish the darn thing. 
That is why, four tips ago, I told you to learn the basics. You gotta start projects with larger shapes, and this goes into the principles of design a little bit, and then you can go into more detail. It's good to have reference you found online or sketches you made yourself. Anything to help you remember the finer details of the overall vision so that you can focus on first crafting the big picture. I promise you'll finish way more projects this way by building what you see in your reference or in your mind in the simplest, lowest detail way possible first. Then add details and clarify the shapes and objects once you've got the structure down. I know this is a really basic concept, but I'm probably talking to a lot of beginners here, and I need to stress the importance of this for you guys. Please get the habit of finishing what you start, and a good way to do that is to make large progress at the start by laying objects quickly in the beginning to make a complete picture of what you're building. This might be building all the walls before adding furniture, or starting with basic shapes if you're sculpting a character. Most of us pros follow this law, so you'll see this modeled for you in a lot of good tutorials you watch. Just nail this one in the beginning so that you have the habit down, and that will give you an advantage. Now take all these tips, combine them together, and go dominate your career. All right, that's all I got for today. I sincerely hope you got value from this. If you were looking for more technical tips such as what software to use, check out the description of this video. And until next time, let's build a better world. Mr. Kamsaki out. And happy f***ing new year. <laughs>